I can go in teacher mode and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, welcome to Toastmasters Leadership Institute and Educational Seminar. To make sure you are in the right place, this session is called Do You Bang? Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. Please turn out cell phones or place them on silent. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you have an evaluation sheet and we'll talk about that more towards the end. And at the end of the session, well, I'll make sure that we come around to actually collect that form uh, prior to us ending. Now, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Mutiat Lao is a registered professional nurse. She's held a variety of roles during her 40 years nursing career. She joined Toastmasters International 11 years ago in order to improve her public speaking skills. Along her Toastmasters journey, she discovered her voice as a storyteller. Toastmasters has helped her develop and enhance her skills in written and oral communication. She is now stepping into her true passion as a storyteller, motivational speaker, and workshop presenter. She is an avid traveler who intends to share her stories on each continent she visits. In her words, stories can help connect and heal the human family. Ladies and gentlemen, please assist me in welcoming Maya. Shonda Milton, and I always raise her name up there, she did a trifle, and she showed me how she got one of these. Oh, well, I'm a girl. I saw the bling, and I know I'm a queen. <laughs> I always wear a crown. So I said, I think I can do that. For those of you that don't know, Toastmasters is not only an organization that helps you grow as a communicator and a leader, but it's the biggest dying service organization in the world. You learn it, you teach it. You never get out of it, and some of you know. So what I'm going to do today is take you on a journey through the five speeches which covers what I did for my organization. First of all, I have to get a buy-in. How many of you are willing to follow me on this journey? Oh, yeah. No. Show of hands. OK. You have a piece of colored foam either handed to you or on your chair. Is that correct? Yes. No? No. OK. So how many blues do we have in the room? Three? Okay. How many pinks? Ooh, more pinks than blues. Okay, well, we're not going to do it by color because that's not going to work. But what this is, you say you're going to buy into this, right? I want you to find somebody with another piece of phone and exchange contact information. Because what I'm going to do requires you to work together. Okay? 
So just think about that and make sure you exchange information before this day is over. If you don't have a caller, you can exchange with someone who doesn't have a caller? I mean, if you don't have a phone, then you can exchange with someone who doesn't have a caller. No, you're going to have to get one. If you don't have one, who doesn't have one? Okay. Make sure you get it. Oh, she has Thank you. Can you go to your water? Purple? Purple? Here you go. Okay, I'll change with you. Here you go. You can take this one. When I was going to change Oh, okay. Thank you. Now, let me get to the purpose of why you need to exchange information. When you're going to encounter a project like this, you're going to feel sometimes sluggish, in a rut, unable to, to move forward. It's always good to have a rut. Now that day in my club, I had nice colored foam hands. And I said, how many people want a hand? Everybody <laughs> took a hand. But they got lost along the way. That's why I want to reiterate the purpose of sharing that information. You're going to have a, an accountability partner, somebody you'll be accountable to. They will also be accountable to you. How many people in the room are working on their CC or competent communicator? Wonderful. This process was designed for you. How many have done at least five speeches? No, only the CC people, no, not all of you advanced communicators. <laughs> okay. What if you're working on your 12 CC? How many have done of the people completing a CC? Less than five speeches. Okay, you're going to find out how. It's easy as time. Trust me. What you want to do is get this. Did everybody get a calendar sheet? <coughs> No? Oh, I did. Yeah. Are there any calendar sheets left over? Yes. Because if you didn't get one, you get lucky, you get a plan. Oh, don't worry, they're almost outdated. But for, for the purpose of this discussion today, it doesn't matter what date or what year. But what I want you to do, first of all, is write down the days of the week that your club meets. If you meet once a month, I want you to write it on a, on a, on a day of the week that your club meets. And I'm going to go to my nifty little flip chart that I haven't even used yet. Just to make sure you're in the right place. So y'all in the right place? So next, we're going to get into BANG. It's an acronym that I created, believe it or not. I know BANG has another meaning, but for the purpose of today, we're going to go with my meaning. <laughs> so you've written your club dates down, is that correct? How many, how many people's clubs meet more than once a month? Oh, wonderful. So you've got two dates written in there, right? Great. Can I get a definition of bang? Anyone in the room? Just one person. Define bang. Sir? Bye. Ooh. Is that why you can? <laughs> <laughs> a starter okay, gun. Sir? A starter gun. Exactly. A loud noise. A loud noise. I like that one. A loud noise. Anybody else? Getting aggressive. Close. What I used to wear in my hair. Okay. Oh, there you go. What? So bang oh, oh. has a lot of different meanings. I'm going to give you my definition of bang. The B stands for bold. As a Toastmaster, you're going to learn to become bold. Now, believe it or not, I came to Toastmasters bold. I was not the little girl sitting on the side of the seat being quiet. I have always been bold, and I'm proud of it. Articulate. 
You're going to learn how to speak clearer, slower, stop the ums and the ahs, maybe not the so's because I still have up those. You are also going to learn how to hear your own voice and the voice of other speakers. You want to become assertive, not aggressive, but assertive, and there is a difference. Network. This is the time. This is the place. And if you exchange that information, you've already started to network. And then you're going to learn how to go and get what you want. So back to your calendars now. If you want to achieve your CC by June 30th or earlier, you're going to have to use your calendar. You're going to have to speak at every club meeting. You can't be hesitant and say, oh, I don't know how to start my speech. Oh, I can't do it. Not only will you speak at your club meetings, you're going to learn how to use the club ambassador program. <laughs> how many are familiar with that? Let me tell you something about this club ambassador program. You may or may not know. But there's a section on here. If you attend a conference, you get extra points. Did anybody know that? Well, you see. And then you get to wear uh, these pins. I got a bunch of them because I keep doing this ambassador program. It allows me to go to other clubs and gain information and insight. Every club is different. Every audience in every club is different. I've been at clubs where it's like a crack the whip. Everybody's a self-starter, motivated, talented speaker. And I've been to other clubs where you have speakers that are just barely able to speak for a minute. But they're still supportive. What I want you to understand today is that it doesn't really matter how great your speech is. A lot of people get stuck there. Well, it's not the best speech. I won't give it. This is the only environment where you can fail. And I put that in quotes. I don't believe in failure. I believe you're always winning and growing. So remember, when you're preparing your speech, it doesn't have to be great. It just has to be done. That's how you get triple crowns, triple crowns DTM, and all this other stuff I got on here, by doing it. Your buddy, your partner is not only going to be your accountability person, they're going to be your cheerleader. They're going to be there to tell you, you can do it. You can move forward. So did you all get this? Did everybody get this information down? So how many people are willing to be bold, assertive, articulate, network, and then go get what you want? Oh, Mr. Dave. We've got seven days in a week. Seven. Some clubs, believe it or not, I think there's one or two that might even meet on a Sunday. There are. I know one meets on a Sunday, but it's at the crack of dawn, and it's far, far from my home. But I promised I would attend one meeting. <coughs> so we go. Lots of clubs meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My club meets Saturday. Oops. My club meets Tuesday, too, because I belong to two clubs. Another way to achieve your certifications, if you belong to more than one club, you double, triple, quadruple the possibilities. Still with me? Yes, ma'am. How do you decide now, you say you're a dual member, yes, which one gets the credit? Both. Because I'm that bold. What? I'm that bold. Both will get credit. Both I clubs? may do a CC for one club and an ACB for the other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so you can do as much or as little as you like. I've gone on the, the district website and I've seen people attain five, seven, nine certifications in a year. It's possible. It depends on what you want. Now, I've triple crowned a couple of times, pat myself on the back. 
but I don't have a problem speaking. In fact, more than likely, the timer is going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got how many months in a Toastmasters year? Wow. From what time to what time? July 1st to June 30th. June 30th, we say, but we all know in reality, don't wait till June 30th. Because you will not get in on time and you will not get your practice. You want to move it along and get there a lot soon. Okay, my first speech was bad, and we pretty much covered bad. The next speech I did was how. No, it was entitled, Elephants for Breakfast. How many of you have eaten an elephant before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, how did you eat your elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. One bite at a time. Whether you baked it, fried it, filleted it, whatever. Any gigantic project is best taken one small bite at a time. Don't get overwhelmed when you see your CC manual and all those features you have to do and all those projects you have to do. Remember, you're going to eat this elephant. You're going to chew it, swallow it, and digest it, and then get the benefits. Oh, did that come out right? I'm a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> but one small bite at a time. And remember, you've got somebody to help you. You've got a cheerleader and you've got an accountability partner. So you will get that outfit down. The next thing I did was, I think it was called putting it all together. No, something to brag about. Something to brag about. Anybody in this room, do you have something to brag about? Let me see some hands. Yes, sir. Jeff? Me? Yeah. Oh, the one thing I'm going to brag about is that I'm finally getting video caught up on time, done, and with this, hopefully, some of the educational sessions and with permission of the contestants, posted within a week. Wonderful. Right. That, that but it's got to be taken one that it's got to be taken one step at a time. Exactly. And <laughs> anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, you just got a job. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Brandy, come on, let's have, come on. Anybody else in the room? Yes, ma'am. In only two years with Toastmasters, I was able to achieve a couple goals there, but also become a paid professional speaker for the medical cannabis program. We're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Something to brag about. Yes, sir. My speech is in five weeks. I've only been five weeks with uh, oh, Toastmasters. Let's give them a <laughs> What have you got to brag about? It's always a learning process. Oh, oh, we ain't got time for it. I have <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the biggest thing for me right now is not the fact that I earned my DTM, but the fact that I went to a club. I was coach of that club. This club has four numbers. So if anybody understands that, this is a very old club. When I got to the club, the members were solid on keeping that club alive. We had a very short deadline. I would say like two months when it clicked. Two months to get that club up to Charter Street. From eight to 12, to 20. It was insurmountable. It was an elephant for me. And I met Sharon Giles at my club. And I said, Sharon, I'm at this club and we need help. And then I went to different events throughout the district. And people started coming one by one. June 28th, we were up to charter strength, which number one, released me from my coaching duties, secured my advanced leadership silver, which in turn gave me my DTM. But it wasn't about me. It was about the dedication that I saw, the perseverance I saw, the family like atmosphere that I saw grow and develop in that club. That's what I have to brag about. It looks, it looked impossible. It looked like it wouldn't happen. 
it looked like I would be kosher for several years. But it happened, and I brag about that. I also brag about LaShonda Milton. She was the person who showed me the way to get to this path. But she was also my division director, South Division Director, last Coastmaster year. And she was a kind of leader, kind of like myself, Liza Fair. You want to get it done, but get it done. Okay. Not get it done. So that was something else that I always <laughs> brag about. And I always mention her name because she has been a very positive, indirect mentor and role model for me. I gave was about putting it all together. So what we're going to do now is try and put things together. Kelly, what speech are you going to do next? Which speech is that? I don't remember the title. Well, don't worry, honey, because I got the book right here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's working on their leadership? Everybody. Everybody. How many people are doing a leadership track? You're not concentrating on the speeches, you're just concentrating on leadership. Okay. So how far are you in your leadership track? Yeah, what part is that? In the CL? Okay, and then you're going to go on to your advanced leader for us. Wonderful. How do you feel about stepping out of your club? Or have you stepped out already? Okay, wait a minute. Was that a... <laughs> Remember, you gotta be bold. You gotta step out. That's the only way you're gonna get to bank. Step out of your club. And what I found in stepping out of my club is you put on a new pair of lenses to see customers. It's totally different outside of your club. The first thing to do is that ambassador program. Visit the club. Just go to the website, Toastmasters International. It says find a club, put in your zip code, and you can go from 25 miles to like 100 miles from your house. Do it. Please do it. You'll be amazed at how clubs operate differently. You may be inclined to join another club, but step out of your club and into the area. Yes, ma'am. Is there a route to DTM to bypass this area? To the no. No. <laughs> I thought I could do that too, in the but no. Is Bowling County waiting to share with us today to get around that area? No, the program works because the program works. Right. You have to work the program. I had to be bold enough to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. And there's, yes sir. Sir? Okay, baby. I don't want to let everybody know. This is my bag. Uh, That's my boo. Sir, I like that, sir. Like, you are. Um, this is to your point about the area director. I, so when I did it, I thought it would be interesting to do, but the one thing that it showed me more than anything else is uh, that there's a life outside the club, and that I've met so many more people because of it, and it was it's almost fun. instant. It was including, it was, uh, it was instant that I like it was just the idea of you had to go to other clubs. Mm -hmm. Right. You have, to, you have to speak about postmasters to other clubs. You have to do so. You have to go to the meetings. You have to understand how the inner workings are. Right. So I wouldn't, I mean, it's required for a reason. Everything is designed. Right? Exactly. Everything is designed. And I just thought, oh, yeah. I'll just go do that. But I learned Very. so much. I met some great people. Mm -hmm. And I had something that uh, I, I'm glad I did. And it helped a lot. I'm just going to tell her real quick, you're not going to find a more satisfying experience in Toastmasters besides becoming an area director. I did it four times already with District 30 Sergeant Arms for about six years, but I'll tell you that district involvement is really key to your growth and the learning about the scope of this organization. Yes, it can be a little tough, but it's well worth it. It's a Saturday commitment. I it overlaps. It's a challenge. Saturday. But I mean, you know, you can you know you can appoint an assistant. There's always a way to do it. You know, and conference chairs, everything else. Yeah, I have a question. The, I'm not familiar with the club ambassador program. Okay. Is that a project that goes toward high power leadership? We'll or talk about that in just a second. Uh -huh. I'm going to say, what if you don't have transportation? 
that would be a really interesting. What about your friends? Yeah. <laughs> they, they will there, if, if there's a will, there's always going to be a way. Yes, sir. When do you decide to take out a membership for the second or multiple clubs? Well, I was kind of uh, <laughs> <Voluntold. laughs> encouraged. <laughs> Volun Encouraged to join another club. <laughs> I won't mention any names here. <laughs> but you get to a point where you know it's important that you do that. The club that I was able to coach now has a club full of new members who don't really understand the Toastmasters program. We have some seasoned members in the club, but as a newly vented BTM, I know my responsibilities and my obligations. And that's to help encourage, motivate, and empower Toastmasters. Now, I've seen DTMs take it, put that plaque on the wall, that thing in their pocket, and say, I'm a DTM, but I don't do speeches anymore. I'm a DTM, but I'm not going to do that anymore. It puzzles me, and I know to each his own, but in an organization that gives so much, is it a problem giving a little bit back? Well, we have speakers at our conferences, and these are now paid professional speakers, like Darren McCoy, okay, and others. They come here for free. They don't get paid to speak, but their dedication to Toastmasters and to knowing how this program works makes them come back and give them. And I'm sure everyone in this room, whenever you reach whatever level you're aspiring to, you too are going to want to give back. You too are going to want to share what you've learned. Because it works. It works. Like I said, my role was coming in to improve my communication skills. But before I completed my competent communicator manual, people kept saying, well, oh, Tia, your stories are beautiful. I'm like, what story? I was giving a speech. Hey. But I kept hearing story, story, story. People will tell you who you are. You may not know who you are, but they will tell you who you are because they see you through lens that are not your own. So after being told I was a storyteller, I was a great storyteller, I was a phenomenal storyteller, I was like, well, heck, maybe I need to become a storyteller. So I joined the storytelling group. And I spoke for the first time in front of a huge audience, and I delivered my personal story about reconnecting with my family in Africa. Through DNA, I was able to trace the, quote, tribe that I belong to, and I took a trip to Cameroon, and I was welcomed back. I was reborn. I was named. And during that story that I told, my son-in-law said, Mom, you almost brought me to tears. And there were people in the room that were yeah, actually I mean, crying. Grab it and I'll take it. There were people in the room that became intrigued about DNA, about genealogy. So the purpose of to deliver a speech, a story, or a message is to reach somebody in that room. To touch somebody in that room. So. Since uh, the question was asked about the ambassador program, I don't think I have enough to go around, but we'll pass out as many as we can. And certainly you need one, because you ask a question. The club ambassador program is a program that was developed and these are available, they were available at the registration desk. Okay. Uh, that's where I picked these up from. And what you do is you visit a club, not your home. You know three things that are unique about the club. You get the officers to sign it on, and then you present it to the person whose name is listed at the bottom. If you come to a conference, you have a conference registrar sign -in. That gives you extra points. And like I said, I've been doing it. I've got three on here, and I know I have some more somewhere. It helps to grow you. 
It's another thing about stepping outside of your individual club, which is a bonus for you. You may get to a club like I did once, and they didn't have a Toastmaster. I was just visiting. You need our Toastmaster? We don't have one. So then, already at that level, I stepped in there, and I had my manual. Always take your manuals with you. Got signed off for that level. Table topics are great. How many people like table topics? I encourage people in table topics because you're always going to find that odd, awkward situation where you don't have an answer. But the more you practice, flip that question if it doesn't fit, then answer it. But table topics, that's a good way to practice it. It's a visit of the club through the club ambassador program. And like I said, it helps to grow you and stretch This is a place, if you want to stay in one spot and be stunted, you can leave. It won't happen here. Okay, everybody got money, right? Did everybody get some money? Let me get my last bill. My last dollar The purpose of the money was this. I talked to Toastmasters and people pay dues. Everybody in here paid up? Yes. Are the dues cheap? No. Yes. Yeah. They're relatively inexpensive for what you get, but if you're cash strapped, no, it might not be cheap. But I encourage people. Are you a person who likes to waste your money and your time? If you go to your Toastmasters club and you don't participate in every meeting, you can scratch those dollar bills, burn them up or whatever, because you're wasting your money. <coughs> Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. Everybody in Toastmasters commits to the Toastmasters promise. And the Toastmasters promise talks about being accountable, coming to your meetings on time, regularly, being prepared at your meeting and regularly. You will never grow unless you allow yourself to grow. And you got to do the work. There's no way around that. I can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So please be encouraged and develop a schedule. Put that on your calendar as well. You got your two meeting days in there. Find one day of the week and you're going to make an ambassador visit. You're going to visit a club outside of your, your own club. It could be in your neighborhood. It could be far away. And that Sunday morning club I talked about, they said, hey, <laughs> we don't go there because they have food in the morning. Where is it? I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Do we have any questions at this point? How come the ambassador program don't take video submissions? I'm sorry. They should take video submissions. You know, we're moving into a new era. We're going tech, so who knows? Maybe we won't even be having club meetings. We'll just be on face, uh, face. No. <laughs> this is my speech. Watch me. <laughs> who knows where we're going? When I came in, you got a CTM. ATM. New people don't even know what that means. I was just short of becoming a competent Toastmaster. But instead, I became a competent communicator. Let me see if I have anything else to put on this job. I do, I do. So in putting it all together now, you know you are you're on the right track. Now the key is not to fall off the track. So with that being said, you're going to make sure you share that information with somebody in this room. You're going to be accountable to them. They're going to be accountable to you. Joan K. Moore, our past, past, past district governor, said, set a goal. Plan your work. Work your work. <coughs> so easy peasy. If you set a goal, Plan it and work it, and I'll be working it, you will get there. 
I guarantee you, you will get it. Here's that ambassador program that I've been talking about. Please utilize it. It is for your growth and development. Yes, ma'am. Can I add also, if you're looking to do more speeches, you can actually call the club and see if they have room for you to go in and do a speech. And that's a way you can do more speeches and get your CC or whatever you're working on. Yes, ma'am. It's important when you <laughs> travel outside of the state. Visit clubs in other states. They welcome you. See if you can get on the agenda. I'm glad you brought that up, Cheryl. I had an opportunity to travel to Mario, England. And I looked for Toastmasters clubs, and I found one. What was unique about that club? Because on that forum, what three things are unique? This club met in a hotel, and when they took a break, they went to the bar. So they really were Toastmasters. <laughs> they also felt that they were the best club in the world. I told them, you don't have a theme song. <laughs> you don't have a theme song. Wayo has a theme song. And it's twofold. We know our club name and we know our club number. How many of you know your club numbers? Good, but not great. OK, I'm going to sing my song. Wayo. as creative as we are in Braille and everything. <laughs> but commit it to memory because everywhere you go within the Toastmasters world, you need to be recognized by your club name and number. Some clubs have, like I said, short numbers. I'm sure there's a club number one out here somewhere. <laughs> My club has a lot of numbers. There are clubs with even longer numbers now because clubs are being developed on a regular basis. Talk of Toastmasters. Two opportunities a year to promote your club in a growth program. Talk of Toastmasters. I was privileged to go on the website, go to the place where it says logos and templates, and make business cards. I have people who have come to me to want to know what role I had in Toastmasters. The card is impressive. I don't remember what. It says area director. I direct areas in Toastmasters. <laughs> but use that as your calling card. I gave it to one woman and she said, you know, this is the third time this month somebody said something about Toastmasters. That's a hint I need to go. If you think someone could use a friend, be one. Remember to be a buddy. Remember to support people. I made a mistake in evaluation one time, and I'll say it like that because I was so harsh in my evaluation, that member didn't speak for months. Nope. I felt that I had done that to Maybe I did, but I was not encouraging. I was not urging. I said, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done that, and if you do that again, that's not what this is about. So always encourage. Remember, it doesn't have to be great, it just has to be Stop. And this is me. I'm going to just tell you like it is. I didn't come here to be average. I'm not average. I'm awesome. And I bang. <laughs> now, who was the first person in the room? I would say you were. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it like this. There were people that responded to questions. Oh, you got your hand up. You know you did that, right? Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. And what are these for? To make noise whenever we're in a post-fashion meeting or whatnot. Give it, give it to her. Nice to be like you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Who else? There was some other people.
Yeah. You know what? If you if you ask a question. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. you know what? I'm being bold now. Thank you. She was being bold, wasn't she? Yeah. All right. So let's give me a round of applause.